Hello everyone, Stucker you here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about some Confederate gold. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then please, sit back and listen, because this one is going to be a little bit interesting. You see, back during the American Civil War, Union troops were closing in on the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia, in early April 1865. At the time, President Jefferson Davis and the rest of his government fled southward, allegedly, at the time, carrying with them a very considerable amount of gold, silver, and other coins. But when Union officers caught up with Davis on May 10th near Irwinville, Georgia, he only had a couple dollars with him. So really the question is, what happened to the Confederate treasure? Over 150 years later, people still don't really know the answer. But to know that story, we kind of got to go back to the start. So the story begins in Richmond, Virginia on Sunday, April 2nd, 1865. This being when Confederate President Jefferson Davis receives an urgent message from General Robert E. Lee while attending a church service. Now Lee warns Davis that his government needs to evacuate Richmond immediately, or they are going to be captured by federal troops. And so late that very night, two trains depart from Richmond that are heading south. The first carrying Davis, his family, Confederate officials, and other documents they needed, and the second, a copious amount of Confederate gold. You see, this was all the cash reserves of the Confederacy. It included the gold, the silver, the other coins, the gold reserves that were owned by Richmond's banks, as well as a very large amount of jewelry that had been donated by Confederate women over the years to the cause. Which fleeing with such a large amount of potential money there were a lot of rumors as to exactly how much they had. The veterans' organizations in the area rumored that it numbered in the millions. This number was also believed by Union officials who urged their soldiers to catch the president as quickly as possible and secure the reserves. But the thing is, in the end, we don't actually know how much money there was. By their own accounts, they carried around $500,000 worth of silver, gold, and other bullion. But also, it doesn't matter, because by the end, whatever amount they started with, they didn't have by the end of it. Now, of course, this is for a variety of reasons. By early May, a number of different travel expenses had steadily depleted their coffers. Some of these known expenses incurred by Davis's group included $108,000 that were paid to escorting troops near Savannah River, and $40,000 paid for supplies in Washington and Augusta, Georgia. The fleeing Confederates also carried around $450,000 in Richmond Bank gold, but these funds, they weren't going to touch because they didn't actually belong to the Confederate government. And so on May 4th, after Davis and the few advisors that remained with him made the decision to disband the government, they entrusted some $86,000 of the remaining treasury funds to two Confederate Navy officers that were tasked with smuggling it out of the country to Britain. But the thing is, it never actually got there. Because of this action of placing that amount of money in the hands of two private individuals, this more than likely was the only real definitive case of officials stealing the money. It is also very possible that one of these Navy officials, a man by the name of James A. Semple, spent the money on his love affair with Julia Tyler, who was the widow of President John Tyler, as well as a failed plot to provoke war between Britain and the United States. Which, yes, I know you're probably looking at me right now going, what the hell are you talking about? There were a number of things that people were trying to do towards the end of the war or had ideas about that didn't really pan out, but were very harebrained, far-fetched ideas that could theoretically have happened. It kind of goes back to that whole thing with uh, Germany in World War II and wonder weapons that they wanted to create. But either way, after depositing the Richmond bank funds in a local vault in Washington for safekeeping, Davis continued heading south with his wife and their children and a few others. They split what remained of the Treasury's funds with a second group that they planned to meet in Florida. But on May 10th, when members of the 4th Michigan Cavalry captured Davis's group near Irwinville, Georgia, well, at the time, they only had a few dollars left with them. And at that point, it really is unclear what actually happened to the money, or at least the remaining money that they had. One theory suggests that it was stolen by the Michigan cavalrymen and then kept secret. Another says that Davis and his group actually hid the money to come back later and try and reclaim it for the new Confederacy. There are even rumors of coins being found in the area where Davis was captured to this very day. But as for the Richmond Bank gold, that quickly fell into the hands of federal troops, which occupied Washington only days after Davis left. This being valued at nearly half a million dollars, the gold was then loaded onto wagons that were heading north in the custody of the U.S. government officials. But then, something else happens. On the night of May 24th, as the group made camp for the night in Lincoln County, Georgia, near the Danburg Crossroads, some 20 armed men on horseback invaded the camp and then carried off as much gold as they could carry. Eventually, federal soldiers were able to get back approximately $140,000 of it, but as for the rest, we don't really know. Even today, there are all different kinds of rumors that persist about what actually happened to the Confederate treasure. People do like to believe that there is something out there, even if nothing significant has been discovered this entire time. But I mean, it makes sense why. 
The short of it is that Davis and his group left Richmond, Virginia with a lot of money. And six weeks later, when they were captured, there was no money. So what happened to it? We don't really know. But that is the story of the Confederate lost gold. And who knows? Maybe something will change in the future. Maybe you'll find it yourself. We don't really know. But this has been Stakuyi with the history of everything. I kind of want to cover more mysteries and other things like that. If there's any particular ones that you want to know or questions that you have, please make sure to put them down in the comment section below. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button for notifications, anything that you can do to help this video in the algorithm. Until then, I appreciate you and hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye, guys.